In this section, we're going to dive into setting up an asset library in Blender, something crucial not just for this course, but for streamlining your entire workflow. Having an organized asset library means you can store all your necessary assets in one place and access them in any other Blender file simply by dragging and dropping them into your scene. So setting up an asset library in Blender is pretty straightforward. Think of it as a central place where all of your assets live, whether it's characters, materials, animations. Once it's set up, you can access them without needing to constantly append files manually. If you've used software like Quixel Bridge, for example, this concept will feel pretty familiar. So I've already got some asset libraries that have been set up previously, but for this tutorial, we're gonna be starting fresh and building one from scratch to walk you through the entire process. So let's just create a new asset library. You can name it whatever you like, but I typically call mine something like library underscore master, since it's a master file that holds all of my important assets. Let's go to the Preferences tab inside of Blender, then go to File Paths, and here you should see a section for Asset Libraries. You can click on the plus button to add a new asset library. Now, Blender will automatically open the folder where the current Blender file that you are in is located, and it should be auto-selected. So you can just go ahead and press Add Asset Library. On a side note, make sure there's only one Blender file inside this folder that you intend to store your assets in, as if there's more, it can cause conflicting issues without proper setup. I'm just gonna call this Test Library. Once you've done that, Blender will automatically reference everything from that Blend file, allowing you to drag and drop assets straight into your projects, regardless of whether you are inside another file. So to add an object or a collection to your asset library, it's as simple as right-clicking on it and selecting Mark as Asset. Now it should be part of your asset library. You can even organize your library further by creating folders within the asset browser. Like here, I'm gonna create a folder for Western props and I'll drag in this crate asset that I have previously prepared into it. Once your asset is in the library, it's ready to be used in any scene. So here's where linking becomes important again. Let's say I wanna bring this asset into another shot. Select the asset and make sure that I'm using the link option in the top drop down box and not append. This ensures that any updates to the asset in the library file will be reflected in all shots where it's being used. You also need to make sure that if you added in a collection to your asset library, that you make sure to tick off the instance option that appears in a pop-up at the bottom. To show updating a linked asset in real time, I'm gonna go back into the library source file and just make some changes to the crate. So something simple like just scaling it up and I'm just gonna adjust the material as well. Then all you simply have to do is save the changes in the library source file. Now, when I open up the shot again where the crate was linked into, the updated version will automatically appear. There's no need to manually re-import anything. So as you can see, linking assets to the asset library is actually a game changer for working efficiently, uh, especially when you're dealing with multiple shots or projects. We hope this gives you a solid understanding of how to set up and use an asset library in Blender. It's such a powerful tool and will save you countless hours in the long run. In this section of the tutorial, I'm gonna be walking you through the process of blocking out an environment, which will be based on the concept art that we've received. I'm gonna show you how to go about blocking out a building and then putting it into a, sort of a main section of our town environment. So we'll be using simple low poly geometry just to begin to piece together a really basic version of the buildings and environment. This helps us to sort of establish a scene where we can start to place cameras and we can plan our shots. Having a basic version of the environment is super useful as it gives us a good reference for later. It's not about the details at this stage, just the main aspects of our environment itself. So as you can see, I've got our concept art pulled up and this is gonna be the main inspiration for what we're actually gonna be creating. So in this example, our central focus is the church with some nice sort of Western style buildings on, the, on either side of it. And for now, I'm gonna just take one of these simpler buildings and start to block it out. Uh, this one's mostly just basic cubes anyway, so it should be pretty easy to uh, replicate. So first, I'm just gonna break down the geometry itself. And you can see there's just a larger sort of cube here for the main structure of the building. And there's a balcony coming off of that. 
with a small sort of protruding section in front of the door. One thing that's sort of crucial when you're blocking out environments is having a really good scale reference. So I'm just going to bring in a character from our asset library. I've added in a background character that has been prepped earlier. I know that he's 1.8 meters tall, so I'm going to be using him to ensure that everything is in proportion. We'll start by scaling up our cube to match the building size. And don't worry if it's not perfect at first, as this is just about rough proportions, but you may actually receive measurements from the client for particular buildings or the set itself. Once we've got the scale down, we can begin to place our reference character sort of, I guess, where the door would be, so we can get a good indication if everything's going to be lining up height-wise. Looking at the concept art, there's a small raised area with some steps at the front of the building. So I'll add that in now by going into edit mode and creating a loop cut. Then I'll press E after selecting the new faces and extruding that outwards. Remember, this is all just block out work, so we don't need to worry about the finer details at this point. A lot of the time, clients or other team members will provide higher res models later down the line. So for now, we're just focusing on overall form. Again, we're not focusing on details. We just want the overall shape to resemble the concept art. I'm now just going to go ahead and continue building the rest of the structural details, such as the roof and the door using the same techniques with loop cuts and extrusions. Once we've got our building blocked out, we can move on to other parts of the environment. Once again, using the same techniques, you can quickly create versions of the buildings. For instance, we might scale one up or down or just adjust the roof to add some variety. The church in our scene will follow a similar block out process using the same basic shapes. I'm going to go ahead now and just block out the rest of the town and begin to piece it together into something that closely resembles our concept art and storyboards. When we're done with this block out, we can make sure to group everything neatly. I've got all my buildings organized into collections and they are labeled clearly by name. So things like the saloon, water tower, whatever it might be, with some buildings placed strategically according to the designs that we've been given. I've even added in just a simple sand dune for our ground plane, which will help to give us a sense of the wider environment. And that's pretty much it for the blocking stage. We now have a basic layout that will help us set up our shots. In the next section, we'll be setting up a master scene and blocking in basic cameras to match the shots from our storyboard. This is essentially where we bring all of our assets together into one unified space, kind of like a main template shot for the rest of our project. We'll be compiling the environment, characters, props, and everything we need into one place. And we're gonna lay it out neatly for easy reference. You might even pose your characters or set up some shots just to get a feel for the scene, which is called scouting, sort of helping you roughly plan camera movements. Now, this master scene is what we'll be duplicating across all of our different shots. If you're using Prism or any file management system, you'll want to create a new sequence. For this example, I'll call mine West Blocking. Let's create a master shot under the new sequence. I'm just going to call it Master Shot or something similar like Shot 0000. Once the scene is ready, the first step is to organize things by bringing it into our environment. I'll create a collection for the environment assets. We're going to import the block version of our town we've previously built. I'm obviously using Prism here, but you could do the same with append or file link if you aren't using Prism. It's crucial to link in our assets rather than append or import them, because this way, whenever there is updates to our assets made in their respective source files, the changes will automatically be reflected in our current shot and any other shots where our assets have been linked into, meaning regardless of which shot we're in, we'll always have access to the latest version of the asset. I'm going to select the link option inside of Prism and select the published collection of our blocked town environment. Next, I'll bring in our characters. They are actually saved in the asset library, so I'll make sure to select the link mode from the drop down at the top and import them into the scene that way. It's important to link in all of your assets first, then you can go through and apply a library override. This just means that we can gain control over our assets and edit them while still having them retain their link to the source file. To override a linked asset, you can select everything inside of its respective collection, right click, go to library override, 
make and then hit selected and content. And that's it. Our characters are now updated and ready for their rough sort of placement inside of our master shot. Let's go ahead and just position the characters roughly in the scene. For extra reference, I'm just going to go ahead and attach some props like the guns to our main character's holsters. And I'm going to do that using a child constraint so that the revolvers stay aligned with the character's hips as we move them around. So now that we have our environment and character set up, this scene is ready to be split off into individual shots. Before we do that, I like to do something called scouting. This involves setting up rough camera angles based on our storyboards, which sort of helps to visualize what each shot could look like and speeds up the planning process. For example, I'm going to look at shot number 10. The storyboard shows the villain's hand close to his revolver. So I'm going to just pop a camera in and then go to the view tab and make sure that camera to viewport is checked. This means that we can control the camera with our usual navigation tools. We'll place it in a position that matches the storyboard and I'm just going to name it camera shot 10 for clarity. In the camera settings, I like to turn on the pass per two opacity to full so that we can focus on what's inside of the frame only. Don't forget to turn on your composition guides too, like the rule of thirds to help you frame your shots correctly. I'll be repeating this process for all of the relevant shots in the storyboard, just sort of roughing them in for now to give us a good overview. And from here, we're ready to split off the master scene into their respective individual shots. Splitting off is simply creating a duplicate of the master scene for each shot. So for example, let's split off shot 10. I'll save the master scene and then duplicate it. Once we've duplicated the file, we can go into it and delete all the extra cameras that we won't be needing, keeping just the camera for shot 10 that we created. Now we can just start adding animation, adjusting lighting and getting more specific with what this shot needs. And that's it, you've learned how to set up a master scene, block out your cameras and split off shots for further refinement.